spotlighting Hawaii's leaders. We want to bring in Governor David E. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Lieutenant Governor, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Mayor Derek Kawakami. Thank you so much, uh, Senator, for being here. Spotlighting the issues. Where is the virus right now in our community? How much is this overall going to cost the state? How are you responding to the community's concerns? Talk about the level of citations that you guys are writing. Spotlight Hawaii with Yanji Denise and Ryan Kalei Suji on the digital platforms of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii is brought to you by Long's Drugs. Aloha, happy Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining us here on Spotlight Hawaii. I'm Yenji Denise, joined by Ryan Clay Suji, who is seeing all of the action in Los Angeles. Ryan, we want to talk about that at the end of the program. But first, of course, we have to get to the news and we have a lot to talk about. The legislature has wrapped up their session. There's a lot of bills uh, that may or may not be signed by our guests this morning. That's right. We're going to head over to the Hawaii State Capitol, welcoming in Governor David Ige this morning. Good morning, Governor. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Yanji. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start off with uh, some of the headlines that are coming through with the legislature wrapping up this week. There are a number of bills that have been passed, uh, a number of issues that have been in front of the lawmakers in the legislature to decide and and discuss over the course of the session. Uh, Starting off with the minimum wage and that decision to increase the minimum wage, your thoughts on where the legislature ended up landing and how this rollout will Uh, impact businesses and those who uh, work in Hawaii. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. You know, we, um, I I did introduce a bill to raise the minimum wage um, four years ago, actually, to to $15. And it really is long overdue. I'm glad that they were able to get agreement. Uh, And it does uh, space out the increases. Uh, Hopefully, you know, we'll take a much closer look at it and, and try and make a determination. But you know, in general, I've always uh, supported uh, raising the minimum wage. One of the more controversial topics this session was TMT man- Mauna Kea management, rather, and how that will eventually impact TMT. What are your thoughts on the bill that passed there? And do you support eventually having the university seed uh, ground there to the board that they've decided to change it to? You know, we have been uh, trying to meet with all the stakeholders uh, on this issue, trying to find a a way to move forward. Um, I've always uh, supported um, some change in how um, Mauna Kea is uh, managed. And and certainly um, in the meantime, we've insisted that the university continue uh, on its path to complete the environmental impact statements and really uh, get to that next level. So... Uh, you know, the final bill uh, introduces the notion of mutual stewardship, um, which I think is a, a real good concept uh, to implement. You know, we have been um, searching for ways to manage Mauna Kea better. And, you know, I'm certainly uh, open to what the legislature is um, suggesting. You know, there's uh, there's a lot of details that we'll go through. You know, anytime you're dealing with uh, management of lands and public lands, uh, it is a complex issue, so we'll be going through the final bill uh, carefully um, once session is over and, you know, before I have to make a decision on a veto or not. And what do you ultimately think? I mean, when you look at TMT, some say that this bill could jeopardize the project as a whole with removing the University of Hawaii and their role. Do you believe that um, TMT is a project that can still move forward even if management of the mountain and, and those responsible changes? Yeah, Ryan, you know, I I do think a couple of um, new components that are in the final conference draft, you know, it does make a a statement of policy that the state supports astronomy. Yeah, that wasn't in the earlier drafts of the bill. I think that's really important. It does assure that the university will get viewing time so that the astronomy program can continue to be uh, one of the best in the country. Uh, because we have the best asset. So I do think that the final conference draft um, contains many significant improvements to the earlier drafts of the bill. And like I said, I think it's just a matter of uh, going through once um, the the bills pass to to really determine whether they've covered all the bases about the land management, you know, conservation uh, district use permits and a whole bunch of other details. But we know that some will probably file a lawsuit uh, on the measure, and we just want to make sure that um, it's the best proposal we can put forward. 
Overall, how do you think the legislature did this session? What kind of a grade would you give the legislation that you're seeing come across your desk? And uh, are there any measures that stick out that you know you're already going to veto? Um, just a couple of things, Yanji. You know, this um, this session was unusual because of um, the acceleration in the economic recovery. Uh, when I started on the budget uh, more than 12 months ago, I guess right now, or about uh, 10 months ago, uh, we were still looking at making budget cuts and you know struggling to to balance the budget. You know, fast forward, um, the Council on Revenues has increased the forecast every single time they've met, and they've actually added more than six billion dollars to what we expect to receive over the next um, six years. So, uh, entirely different situation. I think um, the legislature has uh, responded to the needs in our community because of the improving uh, economy and the fiscal um, conditions. Uh, you know, just a couple of things that um, I I think they did good work on, uh, you know, Hawaiian homelands and really um, making investments uh, in the homestead program, uh, supporting us in the settlement of the Kalima lawsuit. You know, th that issue has been litigated for decades now. Uh, to be able to arrive at a settlement, I think, is really um, a moving the whole homesteading program forward uh, in a real positive way, I think, um, you know, and there were um, commitments to um, returning funds to the taxpayer, you know, the, uh, the tax credit and tax rebate for everyone, as well as uh, focused on those most needy, the earned income tax credit, uh, making that permanent, uh, I think is a good thing uh, to do. So overall, I mean, I, I do think the legislature has done a good job. You know, there's just a lot of bills passed this session and we'll have to be more careful going through them. Yeah, a lot has changed definitely from, you know, say when you introduced your package to where the legislature ended up with those increased projections. Uh, another thing that has been debated and talked about during the session is the role of the Hawaii Tourism Authority and their role moving forward as well as funding mechanisms. Uh, what are your thoughts on how things eventually ended up and your what you think and believe the Hawaii tourism uh, role should be moving forward? Well, I'm glad that they went back to general funding on that, Brian. You know, the um, the federal funds just has so, so many strings attached in how we can bid those and what it can be spent on. So I'm glad they got back to general funding for the Tourism Authority. Uh, I We are full steam ahead in the implementation of the Destination Management Action Plans. Um, and, you know, we were hoping to get a stronger commitment long term. Uh, to be able to fund um, what the community and stakeholders are identifying as really the things that would make a difference for both our local residents and visitors. Um, but, you know, I'm glad that the, the HTA is funded. You know, as we talk about pivoting and changing um, who we um, invite to our state, uh, there needs to be somebody in charge. You know, I think the Tourism Authority has done a good job in uh, in pivoting into to really embracing destination management, to really think about which visitors we'd like to attract and go after. Um, and I think it will be a real important role for the Tourism Authority to play as we pivot our visitor industry. I want to bring in a question from the audience. Uh, this one is related to COVID. Heidi's saying, could you please ask Governor Ige his thoughts on COVID positivity rising? The state is at 11.5%, Oahu over 12%. I happened to check the dashboard myself this morning. Kauai over 17% positivity rate. We are not seeing uh, those hospital numbers rise, thankfully, but those are concerning. What are your thoughts? Certainly, I think the, even the increase in the number of cases overall, you know, the seven day average uh, increased to 485. So, you know, it's the sixth straight week of increasing numbers. That's a concern. You know, Yanji, the positivity rate is, is kind of puzzling. You know, we're trying to work through and think about what that means or how should we calibrate. Uh, you know, I know that I've taken probably a dozen um, COVID tests at home because I've been going to different um, uh, activities or meeting with people. Um, and uh, I know that all of them were negative and those kinds of statistics are not reported. 
Uh, I know I've met with some people who said they became symptomatic, they did take an at-home test, and they were positive, and they isolated, but they never formally went in for a test, and we're missing those kinds of people. So, you know, I think the percent positivity, we're just trying to understand what it means. It is a high number. That's a real concern that tells us that there is a lot of virus in our community. Um, but I don't think it's the same as a 10% or 12% positivity uh, 12 months ago. Um, so, I mean, I, I do think and I appreciate that people are paying attention. You know, we all know what we need to do to keep our community safe. It's uh, wear a mask, get vaccinated and boosted for those of um, in our community who are eligible. That's the best thing we can do to slow the spread of COVID. And then wear your mask. I continue to wear my mask indoors, even though it's not mandatory. And are you, you know, what are you hearing from the hospitals in terms of what they're seeing? And I'm, I wanted to see if you could expand a little bit more about, uh, about the communication that's currently happening with the hospitals, because we know that some of those weekly meetings that you were having with uh, even the mayors and other healthcare providers, those have scaled back a little. What is that uh, conversation like now with those hospital officials? And how frequently are you uh, getting updated on any sort of uh, statistics that are happening in our, within the emergency rooms? Yeah, Ryan, we do get um, data pretty frequently, at least a couple of times a week, um, and we are in constant communication. Uh, it is increasing slowly. Um, this past week, we went uh, over 50 uh, COVID positive patients in the hospitals, um, the, up from about less than 26 uh, weeks ago. So if there is a slow increase, but we are seeing that um, it's significantly less than what it was in the Delta surge or the first o Omicron surge. Um, and we're not seeing as many patients in the ICU units. Um, so I think overall, we're in a very good position right now. The hospitals are concerned just because the number of cases overall is increasing, but it hasn't really uh, been a strain up, up until this point. What are your thoughts right now on masking? The CDC now says that they would like to reinstitute masking on public transit, specifically on airplanes. Uh, and then we're looking obviously at schools. Uh, schools are coming to an end, but summer fun will begin and summer programs will begin. Do you think that kids should keep wearing masks? Yeah, a couple things, you know, Yanji, I, um, I went to a function on Maui for the first time. So this is my first trip to Maui um, since the pandemic started. And I definitely am wearing a mask uh, when, when I'm in the airport and uh, during the transit centers. You know, I still think it makes sense. And, and certainly it's not going to be a required uh, activity, but I am choosing to wear a mask. You know, with uh, students, it's a little different. Uh, as you know, Yanji, the, the guidance on uh, what happens uh, when there's a positive in a classroom has really changed. And, you know, the re reality is if um, no one's wearing a mask and you discover that someone, a child is positive or, or a teacher or staff for that matter, then you have to get back to quarantining and, and those students would be missing class. You know, if they're wearing a mask uh, during that time, then everyone can continue to, to uh, go to school or go to um, summer fun or other programs. So I still think it makes sense for students to uh, be required to wear a mask. You know, we want to maximize the amount of learning that students can get. You know, I think they'll evaluate for the summer program and then they definitely will uh, evaluate again uh, next fall, depending on what is happening in our community. You know, we still have relatively low vaccination rates, especially uh, in the younger children. Um, so that's, I think, a concern for all of us. Uh, as you uh, may have read, I believe uh, Moderna is uh, moving forward with vaccinations for children under five. Um, and, you know, I'm hopeful. That's uh, certainly a concern uh, when I talk with parents who have young children. Uh, they certainly are concerned about their children getting COVID. Uh, earlier this week, we were able to speak to Movie Hanneman about some of the efforts that are being happening on the Hotel and Lodging Association side as the state gears up for what is expected to be a busy month of summer travel. Uh, one of the things that he also mentioned is that you will be heading to Japan 
to Chirp Tourism and to speak with officials there. Can you share a little more light into that upcoming trip to Japan and what you hope to accomplish? Yeah, thanks, Ryan. You know, as you know, um, for international travel yet, it still is much, much less than what it was pre-pandemic. Uh, and Japan is the most important international uh, source of travelers to uh, Hawaii. Um, so I am planning a, a trip to um, Japan in the next few days. Uh, we hope to be able to, I mean, I'm hoping to be able to meet with Prime Minister Kishida and um, members of his cabinet to really talk about and reestablishing uh, the relationship between Hawaii and Japan. Um, I think that we all recognize how important that is. And, you know, Ryan, there's been a lot of discussion about destination management and, and not just getting more and more uh, visitors here. I think we all recognize that Japanese visitors are, are ones that we want. You know, they tend to uh, engage the community. They are very, very respectful of um, Native Hawaiian culture. Uh, you know, there's more hula dancers in uh, Japan. Uh, I think there are over three million at this point. Um, than they are in Hawaii. And, and Ryan, you know, they really want to learn from the best. Uh, I know many kumus go and teach uh, hula in Japan. Uh, and they really um, want to learn it um, in the most authentic ways that they can. You know, so for all of those reasons, you know, uh, Japan continues to be a real priority for ours. You know, I'll be hopefully meet with the prime minister and uh, meeting with members of his cabinet. You know, we also will be uh, meeting with our travel industry partners. You know, they fully embrace the Malama Hawaii notion and about um, being respectful to our commitment to the environment. You know, we want to look beyond that. We talked, um, we had a number of officials last week we wanted to talk about um, our commitment to clean renewable energy and how we can work on joint research and, and other activities. You know, they're committed uh, to the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, and they want to learn from us. As you know, Hawaii has really been a leader in that area. And they also are doing um, really high-end um, research and development into hydrogen and fuel cells and a whole bunch of other areas that I think we would see mutual benefit in, um, in dialogue and exchange and really working together. Is there something specific that you'll be asking for from the prime minister or any of those travel partners? Could there be a special Hawaii waiver? I know that they have um, a number of restrictions when it comes to quarantining for returning residents in Japan, uh, and that has really limited the ability of those folks to come here and visit. But are there are there specific things that you'll be asking for that could help to open up uh, travel more freely? Yeah, certainly I'm going to be talking uh, to them about um, um, treating Hawaii differently than the rest of the United States. Um, you know, don't know how successful I'll be, but really talk about the notion that, you know, Hawaii has the lowest infection rates in the country. Uh, and, you know, the fact that um, many still continue to wear their mask. And so uh, visitors from Japan would um, feel at home in Hawaii. They will continue to see uh, many of our residents uh, wearing masks. Um, and I think that, um, you know, we're committed to supporting their uh, visitors when they come, uh, making sure that they can get access to testing and health care if they need it um, so that um, their, um, their travelers to the islands would um, not feel abandoned should they um, become sick. I want to switch gears here and move over to another hot topic, and that, of course, is Red Hill. If you can provide any update on where we are at, uh, conversations that you may ha be having uh, with the Navy in terms of the defueling of those tankers and where we stand right now with what's happening up Red Hill. Yeah, th thanks, Ryan. Cer um, certainly, we appreciated that um, the Navy dropped all of their um, lawsuits uh, contesting our emergency order. So. Uh, we are committed, we're working with them um, to uh, do the assessment about what's the best way to safely defuel um, Red Hill and decommission it. Uh, they certainly seem to be committed to defueling as quickly as possible, so we're excited about that. 
you know, we do want to make certain that we do it in a safe way. And, um, you know, that last fuel spill was really minimalized because we insisted that they take all the precautions, they prepare for a spill, they had um, absorbent materials and a whole bunch of um, preventive uh, activities ready to go. And so when it actually did occur, it was really uh, inconsequential. And I think that that's the partnership uh, we expect to see moving forward. Um, they are committed to defueling within 12 months um, after, um, and they want to do it um, sooner rather than later. I want to ask you, the last time you were on here, you did urge the Board of Water Supply to fix existing wells that are you know, out of commission because of needed repairs that are unrelated to this fuel crisis. Um, have you had any conversations or is there any commitment from the state to help to provide some of those resources? Uh, it seems like that is stalled not only, you know, just because of timing, but also perhaps from a lack of funding. Is there any move from the state to support that that would then expedite that? I know that um, BWS is a county resource, but given, you know, how much water the state uses, obviously you're a big uh, consumer and customer. And, and so what are your thoughts on that? And have you had any conversations about fixing those wells a little bit more quickly? You know, Yanji, we did have um, a meeting to kind of talk through the situation and what um, they felt was the priority actions that they wanted to take. We um, told them we would be fully supportive of accelerating it as quickly as we can. Uh, you know, I just talked about the notion of the broken pumps and the broken uh, wells because they can take that action without any permit, you know, and I, I recognize it might be a resource issue, uh, but we've offered assistance in any way. We know that um, having clean, uh, drinkable water is really important to our community. You know, we uh, definitely... Uh, want to continue the momentum of, um, you know, completing affordable housing and, and home development because we know that is um, impacts our community. Uh, and so uh, we are ready, willing, and able. Um, we, um, we still haven't received any kind of permit application uh, for any of the new wells that they talked about. Uh, we stand by ready to um, really uh, prioritize it and really get it done as quickly as we can. You know, we're getting some comments here and questions about concern in rising of crime, uh, specifically in Waikiki. And, uh, you know, we know that mu much of this is handled on the city level, uh, but wanted to just kind of get your overall thoughts on just what we're seeing in the uptick in crime. You know, again, speaking with Mufi on Monday, talking about, uh, you know, just marketing Hawaii as a safe destination continues to be a priority, but it's difficult when there are some headlines that are alarming for those with the recent crimes uh, that have been happening. Your thoughts on just what we're seeing overall and, and how the city as well as HPD and others uh, may be able to step in to help with what we're seeing. Yeah, uh, you know, Ryan, I really do think it's important. Uh, we are seeing an up uh, uptick in crime and, and you know, Hawaii is, uh, is really a safe place and we did see a significant drop in crime during the pandemic when um, you know people uh, were at home and uh, and most of the people really um, was uh, concerned about COVID. Um, so I, I do think it's about reinstituting and refocusing again uh, as we bring visitors back about the programs that we know work. Uh, you know we did have increased patrols in uh, Waikiki and in tourist areas. Uh, I think as we uh, reopen uh, tourism and bring more travelers back, um, you know, those kinds of programs that um, put more police officers in the area, just awareness, you know, public patrols, um, you know, get back to uh, making sure that our visitors are aware of the places that are not safe to be in, especially uh, late in the evenings or early morning hours. You know, just uh, doubling our efforts to keep them informed, uh, make them aware of um, areas that are safe to be, and really those activities that could put them in jeopardy. I mean, I think it's uh, something that we all need to redouble efforts on and, and get back to programs we know that work. 
I want to circle back to one thing and get a little clarity that about something you said regard masks and students. Um, what you did say that you think that DOE will revisit this conversation in the fall. Does that mean that your expectation is that masks stay on through the summer when it comes to DOE properties? No, I, I really meant uh, summer school and fall. I mean, I think, you know, we're really focused on uh, slowing the spread of the virus uh, in schools. You know, I think everybody is looking forward to in-person graduations and, um, and you know, mask wearing is uh, something that will help us get there. We are seeing more COVID cases as school events have restarted. You know, there has been infections tied to proms and other kinds of um, social activities. So just a reminder to everyone that uh, we know that mask wearing works. Um, you know, the fact that we have students interacting more is a risk in and of itself. Uh, and we want to have um, graduations that are in person. So I think we all need to be vigilant and do the things we know make a difference. Wear your mask. Well, this is an election season, and there are many who are vying for your seat. Uh, I would ask you who you're going to support, but I know that you probably will not give us an answer on that, especially with uh, there could be a few more names that could be entering the governor's race uh, next week, in fact. Uh, but what I will ask you, as you know, you see these others who are trying to take over uh, your office and your position, what advice would you give uh, to the next governor who takes over the seat? What are some of the things that you would maybe tell them uh, about things that you've learned or some of the things that you think are important to continue on and some of the things that you've established? Yeah, I mean, I do think, Ryan, you know, this has been, um, I think, a good session for responding to Native Hawaiians. You know, we uh, are significant. We, we will appropriate more than a billion dollars to uh, the Hawaiian homesteading program in the settlement of the Kalima case in uh, supporting the operations at Hawaiian Homelands. You know, they're moving forward um, a bill to uh, increase support for OHA, which I think is uh, important as well. Um, so it really is about uh, continuing the momentum of those activities. You know, we made a priority of extending uh, labor union contracts and we will um, have four-year contracts with uh, most of the public service um, public unions. I think that that's really important. That gives um, our public servants um, some sense of what fair wages will be over the next uh, three years, especially. Uh, and that really gives the legislature and the new governor some time to get settled. But really look at the priorities. You know, Ryan, I, I do think that safe travels accelerated our economic recovery. Uh, and we will see continued improvement. You know, once we can get international travel back, uh, that will make a significant difference. So I, I expect that our economy will continue to improve through the end of the year. Uh, and really, there are uh, many needs that uh, we continue to see. Um, you know, pre-K programs, I think, are so important. And we've had to put a pause on them just because of the pandemic. Um, you know, our commitment to uh, diversifying our economy and really supporting the university and public schools, I think, continues to be really important uh, and really focus on those most in need in our community. You know, it's a, I think it's been a great start during this session uh, to have the resources for uh, tax credits uh, to support those most in need. I think those kinds of programs will have to be examined and seen uh, what we can continue. Well, we wish you a great trip. And by the way, how long are you going for? Uh, I'll just be gone for about uh, six days. Um, it's, um, you know, uh, we're trying to get back as soon as we can. Ryan and I would love to be your plus twos on that trip. <laughs> we wish you a great trip. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We covered a lot of ground and we appreciate it. Yeah, aloha. Thanks, Yanji. Thanks, Ryan. And go Bulls. <laughs> That's right, go Bulls. Thanks for coming here. Uh, well, great to hear from him and uh, exciting clarifications there. The news that Mufi broke uh, a few days ago that the governor will be heading to Japan in the next few days. We hear for about six days, about a week going to Japan to really try to reestablish that relationship to assure the uh, that market in particular, those leaders that Hawaii is a safe place to travel to and that this is, a, this is the time to start coming back. We have missed those visitors and the governor 
perhaps even asking for some special waivers or exemptions so that it would make travel a lot easier to come here because we know that uh, they are an important part of our economy and our tourism market. Yeah, we also heard from him uh, his concerns about the increasing numbers in COVID cases, but also saying that we are in a much different position, uh, that the state continues to monitor uh, those numbers that are going up and communication with the hospitals. He did mention that there has been an uptick with the cases that are in the hospital, but saying again that things are a lot different this time around with what they're seeing as compared to what we saw with the Delta and initial Omicron surge. And that, uh, you know, Hawaii remain, continues to remain a safe place to not only visit, but also just advising people to uh, be aware of their surroundings and to wear a mask if this is uh, that they are in an environment where they would feel more comfortable doing so. But overall, the governor uh, happy with where the state is at right now with regards to the pandemic. Yeah, and also seems to be pretty happy with the work the legislature did this legislative session. Very complimentary about a number of measures that they took, including extending tax credits and giving uh, you know money back to the taxpayers here in Hawaii, giving part of that surplus of revenue back uh, in the pockets of residents throughout the state. Also talking about um, you know giving all that money to Hawaiian homelands and all the benefit that that is going to reap in the years to come. Uh, didn't hear a firm commitment on whether or not he plans to sign the legislation on that new Mauna Kea management. He did say that he thinks the university should play an active role and does like that there are measures in place to make sure that astronomy can continue on the mountain, on the mountain. but uh, you know, not, not a clear yes or no, Ryan, on that. Yeah, and a lot has changed with this legislative session, as he alluded to, with, in terms of funding and projections that really changed the dynamics of how things were moving forward through the legislature and money that was allocated. Uh, and so a lot of bills have transformed from what the governor included in his package to what lawmakers will eventually sign this week on Sunday die and what laws will be, uh, what bills will essentially be sent to the governor's desk. And so they will have to do a deep dive and review of all of those measures uh, to really take a look at some of those items. And then we'll get better word on what the governor uh, sees that he agrees with and others that he intends to veto on his uh, intended veto list that will Again, no doubt, spark further conversation about some of those issues. We are looking forward to uh, another interesting conversation on Friday, and that is focusing on the Alawai. We have a representative from the Army Corps of Engineers and from the Department of Design and Construction from the city to talk about you know, what that project is going to look like going forward. There have been a number of public meetings that have been held about what should happen to that canal. Could it be actually extended? There are some really interesting ideas being uh, bandied about, and so we're going to dive deep into what needs to happen uh, with that resource because, of course, there are a lot of concerns about flooding and climate change and just uh, all that the Alawai uh, has, you know, all the impacts the Alawai could make and also that canal um, project. So we're going to be talking about that on Friday. We do hope you join us then. And very quick, Ryan, um, can you give us an update from the road? That's right. I'm uh, currently on the campus of UCLA. They actually, so UCLA actually has a hotel on their campus. And so that is where I am uh, on the UCLA hotel uh, on campus with the University of Hawaii men's volleyball team as they continue to compete in the national championship. They beat uh, NGU yesterday, advanced to the national semifinals. We'll take on Ball State tomorrow night, which I believe will be 4.30 Hawaii time. Uh, and we continue to produce uh, some behind the scenes actions that's happening. So if you want more on the bows, you can head over to the Hawaii Athletics website and all their platforms for more content. Uh, as this team looks to go back to back and defend their national championship, we'll see and uh, see how they do. But looking forward to that match, as well as looking forward to joining all of you right back here on Friday for another episode of Spotlight Hawaii. Until then, take care and aloha. Aloha. This episode of Spotlight Hawaii is brought to you by Longstrugs.